All right, folks, so today uh, what I would like to do is kind of get back to my bread and butter. I did the team mocks. Again, that was a uh, sort of a reward. I went back and looked at who the biggest team mock viewership videos were and uh, kind of just as a thank you to you guys, here you go. As it turns out, though, and I didn't know if it was just me or the new format or what it was, uh, team mocks are just not doing it right now. I don't know why. You would think most people are really into their, their team seven-round mocks, but um, they're just dead as I look around. Uh, so I, I want to get back today to the bread and butter and do a first-round mock, and I want to keep it in the format um, that I had just done it in and just kind of see how it plays out because I, I like doing it, and again, it's going to save me a little bit of time. Um, I am planning, and I know a lot of you don't care, but I want to do it anyways because I can't help it. I want to do what I want to do. Um, actually, it's already done. I did a 2022 mock draft. I'm going to have to go back to the old style because on the simulator, which I'd like to use, um, the order is all jacked up. It's last year's order, and there's trades that they didn't account for, so everything's kind of messed up. But um, that'll be for a later time, maybe. You know, I got to get the graphics down and everything else. But um, anyways, thanks for uh, checking it out. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and let's get started. All right, so... At some point in time, I'm going to be pausing this and whatnot because I need to be looking into things. I actually did a preliminary mock, which is saved, so I can just look at it and copy it if I wanted to. But I want to be able to go through, similar to what I did with these seven-round mocks, and show you what I'm seeing and why I'm doing what I'm doing. But I'm not going to need to really pause it right here um, because we know we're going Trevor Lawrence, piece of cake, easy peasy, whatever. Don't really even need to explain it. Um, now, as far as the Jets... It used to be a lock Justin Fields, right? Um, then it became maybe Zach Wilson. It's almost now becoming a lock Zach Wilson. And I know there's a lot of almost exclusively Ohio State fans, but <laughs> there's there's a lot of dissension out there. I got to be honest, though. Here's the way I see it. I, I've been looking at pro football focus, and I know there are people that are skeptical about their grading, but it's not just grading, it's statistics. Um, if you're going to trust 2020, Zach Wilson was... I mean, I mean, there's there's no words for how good he was. By far the best quarterback in college. Every statistic, the grading, everything about it is is much better. If you're going Justin Fields, um, it's probably the maybe the program, the consistency. Maybe there's some character concerns. Any of those kind of tertiary kind of things that you're looking at outside of dominant 2020 like if you're just taking 2020 putting them side by side and saying justin fields is better and that's why we should take him you're wrong it's just that simple so i i, I don't i'm not saying there isn't an argue argument for justin fields i'm just saying that can't be your argument and if it is it's wrong he was not better in 2020 um so i'm gonna stick with the board here i'm gonna go zach wilson and that's gonna be simple enough um now i am gonna pause it here because i want to show you something because I need to explain this pick because it's not super common at this point, but I'm standing by it. So check this out. All right. So generally when I, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Clicking ads that don't exist. The, the biggest objection to taking the next best player, Penny Sewell, and going with a wide receiver, which to me is just insane. The positional value. First of all, Penny Sewell is a better football player as we see on our board, but the value of a elite left tackle compared to a top tier wide receiver is ridiculous um it's why tackles that are very very good go in the top five and very very good wide receivers generally don't but here's the objection well we took austin jackson in the first round and robert hunt in the second round we don't need a tackle first of all here's your first red flag right what does that say it says guard um if we come over here here's your second red flag not good not good not good not good not good right we don't have a good offensive line um then you come over here and you look at Robert Hunt. I mentioned how he was listed as a guard when he got drafted at 336 pounds. Go figure. Um, because despite the fact that he did play a decent amount of right tackle, especially later on in his career, which is why he's playing right tackle, um, he also spent actually more time at left guard than he ever did at right tackle. He can easily be moved. I'm not. And the argument generally from Miami Dolphins fans is, well, they need time. Everybody that's bad doesn't just get better with time, right? Some do, but it's the minority. Finding guys that are very, 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 very good at football is a rare thing. 
It's not the thing that just happens no matter what. While we took him in the first and second round, they have to be very... They don't have to be. And maybe he will become good. I don't know. He was good in college. The point is, though, we have an opportunity to take Penesul, Sewell, who's very, 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 very good. We can take um, Mr. Austin Jackson here and move him over to right tackle, and we can take our right tackle and move him into guard, whether we want to put him at left guard, right guard. I don't know. He played mostly left guard. I don't care. I don't care. Saying that we're going to pass on Penny Sewell because we have those guys, you're crazy. And and again, I think a lot of people do this, not Miami Dolphins fans, but a lot of mock draft people do this out of partially laziness, but also partially just giving people what they want. Dolphins fans don't want Penny Sewell. Bengals fans are desperate for Penny Sewell. If we skip Penny Sewell here, we're not going to take him with the Falcons. Not that we couldn't, but again... Nobody wants that. So then the Bengals get them, and all the Bengals fans are happy, and all the Dolphins fans are happy. I'm just, I don't care enough. This is the right pick. You're wrong if you disagree. Penny Sewell is the pick. Um, again, I'm not going to skip here because this is becoming somewhat of a lock, although Trey Lance is becoming very, very popular. I'm sorry, Ohio State fans. It's just becoming a thing. You see Trey Lance at seven here. He's actually moving up the board's very rapidly and if this doesn't stop with Justin Fields slowly ticking his way down and Trey Lance flying up that may be the thing um but as of right now Justin Fields is sort of being locked in here um again I think Matt Ryan is one of the few things that's not completely broken with this team but if we're going to completely tear about tear down and rebuild and we have new leadership and all that one of the things they're going to want to do is get a new quarterback so we are going to do a new quarterback here. And um, this essentially is when things get difficult. Because again, I'm not going to do the easy thing and give Dolphins fans what they want. Just give them Devontae Smith or Jamar Chase. And then they all applaud. And then Justin goes here. And then we get uh, Penny Sewell to the Bengals. And bop, 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 Right? The same old mock that you've seen a thousand times. Although it's kind of similar. But um, this is where it gets interesting. So we can do some things here or we can trade. My favorite thing to do is trade because we've got some talented tackles kind of back here. Because they're tackles, somebody possibly could reach. It's entirely possible. So I don't want to go back to 13, 14, 15. But if I can get back to like here and then take here, that might work out. So uh, definitely a possibility. Had to pause. I could I could hear my son hovering. It's like, All right, what, what do you need, dude? Um, and so the the obvious thing here we've got a couple teams that would like to come up the lions potentially i, I don't know exactly where the lions fans are at but i, I just come on man jared goff i mean i I'm, I'm i'm okay with that as a stop gap and if you want to say because if as you'll see in the 2022 um stuff i think honestly your best case scenario is ride this out be awful and get one of next year's quarterbacks because there's going to be some really talented ones um, so I, I, plus the Bengals want to move back further. The obvious thing to do would be the Panthers. Panthers fans really want Trey Lance and, um, you know, they, they wouldn't have to give up quite as much. The problem is I, I wouldn't mind moving back one more if I can get some more compensation from the Denver Broncos. Um, so I kind of want to try that because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a tackle available. And if I, again, if I can get more compensation, I'm willing to do it. So I just want to see, first of all, what's going to happen here if I do this. I am the Cincinnati Bengals. What am I going to get from the Panthers? That's too much. Third round is not enough. Third and a fourth. So I'm going to get a third and a fourth. Pick. Now, remember, third and a fourth, but this is also a better third and a fourth than what I would get from the Broncos. So that's the sitting offer from the uh, Carolina Panthers. Can I do better than that? I could have just left that up. Denver Broncos in Cincinnati. I want a better better than a third and a fourth. And again, I don't think I'm going to get it. A second is too much. And then again, they can, and that's not even enough to, well, well, that would be why. Oh my goodness. This is stupid. So, so I can do that or a third this year. How about a third next year? Um, Technically that's, I guess, better, but I think I'm just going to take the, the, Carolina offer because it's this year, you know, and it's a third and a fourth, which I was not getting from the other team because they would have had to do more. Why is this so crazy? 
What's happening right now? Is there something else selected? This thing is broken right now. What's going on? <laughs> That's too crazy, man. Yeah, this thing's broke. That's what I'm going to do. I'll get this figured out, and we'll be right back. It's because I was stupid. I didn't select Carolina's first-round pick, so it's like, uh, no, you, you can't for a third and a fourth. That's crazy. So Carolina's up, and we're going to go with Trey Lance here. Um, and again, not everybody has to go that route. It, it really comes down to whether you like Trey Lance, whether Carolina likes Trey Lance. We see that as automatic, but Carolina might go watch Trey Lance and say, that guy ain't it, man. And, and you know, there's going to be better quarterbacks, and we're going to have other opportunities that's just not what we're going for. Plus, free agency is about to hit, and that's really going to change some stuff. Uh, this is based on kind of where we are where we are now. That's also why I need to uh, stop this once in a while because there's a lot of changes going on, and there's a lot of cuts going on, and you know I got to process all that stuff. Um, as for the Philadelphia Eagles, again, I don't know that this is necessarily a lock, but it's a popular pick to go wide receiver. Um, Micah Parsons was also a consideration, but you can see him falling very, very far. What we've got on the top here are three weapons. I don't think corner is completely out of the conversation. I think that's a possibility, but I'm not going to go super crazy with it and uh, just make everybody mad, which, by the way, I would think people would want some diversity. You know what I mean? It's like there's a consensus way that you're supposed to pick, and if you change that, then I hate your mock. Like <laughs> You don't want any of them to be different. Because you know the draft is going to be different. It's not going to go the way you expect. But um, Jamar Chase does make a good amount of sense. They need some wide receiver. They need a lot of stuff. But we'll go top of the board because it's top of the board. Um, and then for the Detroit Lions, this also becomes easier because apparently Kenny Galladay is out the door. Wide receiver has always been an option, but it was who are we going to pair with Kenny Galladay? And then we got this dynamic, you know, Matt Stafford and Kenny Galladay and Devontae Smith, and that's going to be awesome. Well, Stafford's gone, Galladay's gone, and now it's like, well, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, Kyle Pitts technically could be in consideration, but we have TJ Hawkinson, who suddenly is now our only real weapon on this team. So I don't want to say it's a complete no brainer because we also need cornerback. Um, we need linebackers. We need tackles. We need kind of everything. But again, top of the board is Devonte Smith. We need a wide receiver. So we're going to go with Devonte Smith. And then for the Cincinnati Bengals, again, the entire purpose was to get some better value. So we got an additional third and an additional fourth, and we're a little bit closer. This is technically a reach, but I don't care. I came back here specifically so that we can get an offensive lineman. Maybe could have gone back further, but again, I wasn't getting much here. They have a quarterback. I don't think the Giants are coming up for a quarterback. San Francisco maybe, but I don't think they want to give up that much. I mean, they're going to be giving up. Well, I guess they could give up multiple first rounds or whatever in order to get up that far. Um, but I, I just, I don't, I don't I don't want to. Again, 12 is getting a little bit iffy, and I want to make sure I can lock in the top guy, which in this case is Mr. Rashawn Slater. Then we get to the Denver Broncos here, and I want to look at this a little bit. So the, the consensus tends to be cornerback, but I don't want to just click it because I know that's what everybody does. That Why do, why do I even need to be here if I'm just going to do what everybody else does? Um, Kyle Pitts is at the top. It's not impossible, but we've taken so many swings at tight end, it would be kind of weird. We got Fant, we got Fumagalli, we got Jake, we got Okwegbunam, we got all these guys that, you know, we just, we keep, I mean, you could use that in favor of taking um, Kyle Pitts, because obviously it's important that we find that guy. We haven't found that guy, although Albert O.K. here was, uh, in his limited sample size here, done a pretty good job. Um then we get to the cornerbacks, and if we kind of look at the cornerback situation, um, we do have, I think, I thought Bryce left. Did he not leave? I think he did. So you remove Bryce from the equation, and what do we have? We have, I mean, nothing. This is brutal. Um, Ojemudia was real bad. We've got the, who else played at all? Uh, Will Parks was bad. It just, it's, so it's, it's ugly. Um, Wide receiver, obviously, we're not going to go that route. Uh, we wish we could have gotten some better production out of guys like KJ Hamler and Jerry Judy, as you can see. Nowhere near as good as we were hoping, but we're not going that route. I guess, I mean, I, I guess it's kind of straightforward. We could possibly look at linebacker. I know that's important for Fangio, but, I mean, we're getting some better production, and it's not as important as corner, so... There you go. At least you get the thought process behind it as opposed to just an auto-click. But yeah, I think Patrick Sertan makes the most sense here. Again, lots of different things, and it depends on their board. But based on this board, 
this makes the most sense. So we're going with Mr. Patrick Sertan here. The Dallas Cowboys, who have kept their quarterback intact, generally we're looking for defense. That's the biggest thing. We've got our quarterback. We've got our receivers. We've got our running back. Um, the only other major consideration would be offensive line. Um, I do think Derisaw could be a consideration. I know there tends to be a good amount of pride in the offensive line for the Dallas Cowboys, but you know, it's, it's kind of the same that I've been saying for the Chiefs. Like, this thing's about to fall apart. You got to do something. I said it about the Bears. You got to do something. This thing's going to fall apart. Nobody listens. Nobody cares. No, we got to get wide receivers. We got to get flashy stuff. Forget that offensive line. They're all falling apart, man. They're all falling apart. So, um, again, I know the auto pick here is cornerback. That's clearly the thing that uh, most people want to do. If we come over here and look at the Dallas Cowboys and you come down to the cornerback group, you can see, obviously, it's not very good. That's not going to make a lot of people happy because, again, Trayvon Diggs was very popular. I get it. Stats were decent. Um, that's not great. But anyways, not the point. The other thing, though, to consider is Kyle Pitts. And I know that's the one thing, like, the one thing we don't need is weapons, right? <laughs> but I don't know, man. You talk about Kyle Pitts, and we don't have a tight end. It's, it's, it's actually very similar to what they did with C.D. Lamb last year, where it's like, well, we don't. the one thing we don't need is wide receiver. We got two good wide receivers, and they drafted a wide receiver. Um, I do think at some point it gets a little silly, though. And, and again, you got to have a tight end. It's not like you don't want to have one. But at some point, it's kind of crazy, and we're just flat out neglecting the defense so that we can add more weapons, so that hopefully we can just be this, you know, the one thing that comes to my mind is the 2011 Packers, right? The defense is a joke. But who's going to stop us? I don't really want to go that route, so I'm going to stick with the consensus here. I'm going to go with Caleb Farley. Um, and again, I, I do hope that Trayvon Diggs continues to build on what he did his rookie year. And uh, then if we can get Caleb Farley to come in and participate and, and, and grow and be very, very good, then we hopefully will have this great cornerback duo. Um, other considerations, adding another edge or getting some defensive line helping out the linebackers. I know somebody mentioned Leighton Vander Esch. Well, he's, it's because he hurt his neck. Since forever? Like, I mean, it's, that's not really an excuse. He's been bad for two years now. And um, if it's because of his neck, it's because of his neck. But that doesn't mean he's going to become good. So that's certainly a consideration with Micah Parsons. But again, Caleb Farley seems to make the most sense. And then one of my favorite things for the Giants is getting them some weapons. Jalen Waddle's pretty popular, but Kyle Pitts makes even more sense. A lot of people are now saying this is stupid. Kyle Pitts should be going in this range. And it's not that I necessarily disagree. It's just where are you going to put him? Um, again, we could put him above Devontae, but the Lions probably aren't going to take him. So you also have to pair him with teams. So, you know, you could say the Bengals, but are they going to take a tight end over? You know, it's just, it's tough. But in this case, I think Kyle Pitts is going to be the guy for the Giants. Um, you know, I mean, just a fantastic weapon all the way around. And he also doubles as a, you know, he's a tight end. He also has to block. And even though that's not really his bread and butter, when you've got the obligation to build up this offensive line to help Saquon Barkley, which we made a massive investment in, um, having a tight end is not going to hurt that. That's going to help you tremendously in as a compliment to Saquon Barkley. So I'm actually more excited about that, even if even if it was like Devontae Smith and Kyle Pitts, I'd probably want to go Kyle Pitts because I'm just excited about that pairing with the Giants. 49ers, as we know, um, cornerback is a massive need, uh, largely because of... Let me just show you what I'm talking about. So this is what we're talking about. You see all this blue? Blue means they're free agents. And it does not mean they can't get re-signed, but as I've gone through before, you look at the age. Emmanuel Mosley is not very old. Richard Sherman is 33. You got 30 years old here. You've got 30 years old here. You got 31 here. You got 30 here. I think Akello Witherspoon and Emmanuel Mosley are the only ones that aren't in their 30s. Free agents galore. Again, there's a bunch of stuff that we can look at here. Um, you got the offensive line again, um, getting very, very old. I think is Trent. See, this is this is where the free agent thing messes with me. Um, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. I thought Trent was gone. I don't know. Um, but again. Big considerations everywhere, but I'm going to stick with this because it's like we don't even have somebody to put on the field right now. So it's a little bit of a reach, but because J.C. Horn, as you can see, based on the way the things are right now, this is it, man. And if we trade back and miss him, as if you watch my seven-round mocks, happens almost every time, not doing it. I'm not playing that game. We're just going to go ahead and take J.C. Horn here out of South Carolina. Um, Chargers' massive need is offensive line, and we do have Christian Derrissaw here. 
So if we just head over here and look at the, what are we looking for? Chargers. Let's just look at the lineup first of all. And I know this can change a lot, but this is, this is why I'm so desperate for offensive line. Do you see how bad this is? This is really bad. And Balaga is getting up in age. He's going to end up going away. Um, if we look at this, not only is it bad, but look at this. Free agent, free agent, free agent, free agent, free agent, free agent, right? I mean, we don't even have bodies, much less good bodies. I mean, Brian Balaga is the one guy, he was the best offensive lineman we had, and he's the only guy locked up for a decent chunk of time. He's 32 years old, and he's clearly declining. I mean, as a Packer fan, I can tell you, this is not one of his better years, right? I mean, he kind of goes in spurts like that, so hopefully he has a bounce back, but at 32, at some point, he's going to stop bouncing back. And a lot of those uh, bad years had to do with injury, so... There is a massive amount of desperation here. It has, there's nothing, I mean, it really just comes down to, would you like Elijah Vera Tucker? Because the interior does seem to be a lot worse, but considering Christian Derrissaw is higher on the board and a much more pivotal position, and we can find guards and centers later in the draft, we are going to go Christian Derrissaw um, for the, uh, you know, the Chargers. I don't know why Chargers is such a hard thing. Um, the Vikings. Kind of a similar, so many, tackle is going to be tough in the first round. You've got so many teams, and again, I'm kind of blanking on who all of them are. I thought San Francisco, or yeah, maybe lost somebody. I don't remember, but the Vikings cut their tackle. The Chiefs are now suddenly massively desperate for tackles. So that's one thing to consider, and I'm, I'm kind of unsure exactly what we're going to be doing here in Minnesota. I'm thinking Ezra Cleveland is going to kick out here. Um it makes the most sense. Again, the guy's like six foot six, three hundred pounds or something. I mean, he's he's he has no business playing guard. So I'm not entirely sure if we've if we want Ezra Cleveland here and we've got Brian O'Neill at least for the time being, um, probably for the long term. I don't know. We're kind of just looking interior, but we do desperately need some interior help. So um, looking again at Elijah Vera Tucker is a consideration, especially now that Ezra Cleveland, who we expected to be a guard, is now probably going to be a tackle. We got to fill that spot, right? So Elijah Vera Tucker is incredibly important. Jalen Waddle is not going to be in consideration. Um, Micah Parsons, not really. I mean, they've got a weird dynamic with who do we keep and who do we get rid of? Because we got three linebackers and we can't pay them all, but we don't want to get rid of the the veterans we have. But then if we don't, we kind of got to get rid of the new guy, and we don't want to get rid of the new guy. So it's it's kind of a cluster that I don't want to add to, and I don't think that we generally view that as a a massive need. Quiddy Pay, Gregory Rousseau, this used to be kind of a lock for me personally. I just, I like it. I like the uh, the defense that we have. I mean, it's it's getting worse, but I think that it can just take a massive step forward as we get guys like Daniil Hunter back, as we get Michael Pierce back. Um, as you can see, we've got some solid pieces. Again, a lot of these guys are not going to be sticking around very long, but we add a real dominant guy right here. And you can start to get excited, especially with, again, Pierce here, Hunter here. We know that their head coach is a great defensive mind, so he can take good pieces and make them just beyond elite, right? Um, other teams, like the Packers, can have great pieces and kind of look like garbage. It's just the way it goes. Um, so th that's kind of my consideration. And I, I do think based on, um, you know, he's, he's the highest on the board, so it kind of makes sense. I'm just I'm getting kind of worried about the offense a little bit. Do I want to trust it? We could, I mean, I'm, I'm basically I'm torn between Quiddy Pay and Elijah Vera Tucker, and I think we can get an Elijah Vera Tucker later. So I am going to stick with Old Faithful here, and I'm going to go Quiddy Pay, and I'm just going to start getting excited. I don't want to be too defensive, right? We had a bad year last year because of some unforeseen circumstances. I'm not going to retreat into let's get a guard because we're so terrible. Forget that. We got Kirk Cousins. We've got and I know nobody seems to think that's a good thing. The guy can kind of tear it up, especially with the wide receivers. We've got a great wide receiver duo, great running back. We'll make that work. We'll get some interior guys later. We'll build up this defense so that we're not, again, we're not playing defensive. We're playing offensive. We're, we're going to start attacking. We're going to make a pick that makes everybody else in the NFC North look at it and go, oh, no. <laughs> that's the pick I want for the Vikings. So there you go. Um, the New England Patriots, again, I don't want to just – auto pick what's the easiest but i mean we're, we're generally looking for weapons for new england we got jalen waddle sitting here he's a great value at from 11 to 15 we could poke around but I, I feel like it's a waste of everybody's time so congratulations patriots and this happens in every one of my mocks almost never is there somebody that doesn't fall at a great value whether it was kyle pitts jalen waddle whoever it was at different periods of time 
There's always a guy that's a great value, that's a weapon, that falls right to the Patriots at 15. They're just in a great spot. Um, who's to say what can happen? Maybe some of these guys shock and surprise or whatever and start getting weapons, but the way that it seems, that's kind of the way that it's it's going. Make sure I'm recording because I'm, I'm getting that sort of paranoia. This is where it gets kind of unfortunate because it used to be this was the J.C. Horn spot. I don't know where things got messed up. I think maybe one of these teams was not always grabbing corners, but when you got corner, 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 and, and none of them are guarantees, but at this spot, it's like, man, I don't know. Now, Greg Newsom is coming up the boards. Asante Samuel, you got Stokes running real fast on his 40 time. Maybe some of these guys kind of pull a Jair. You know, Jair was a second-round prospect until Mike Mayock did his mock and called him a first-rounder, and then everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's totally a first-rounder. He was a second-rounder the whole way until Mayock dropped his one uh, that he does every year. And then, of course, the Packers traded up in the first round, got him, and the rest is history. But, I, again, I, I got to stick with the board that I have. Corner is just not a consideration for me. So um, if we come over here, it should be easy enough. They're the first one on the board. Um, again, I don't like to use this as much because some of this is just wrong. But, I mean, just looking at it, we don't really have much here. We have the one guy here who could use some help. We need some help here. This guy's solid. Um this is an issue. This is an issue. This is an issue, especially now that Hassan is gone. We did add J.J. Watt, and that's cool. Not a whole lot else. And I know everyone's excited about Chandler Jones, but, I mean, what am I supposed to do? The guy's 31, had the worst year of his career. Um, you can blame it on whatever you want to blame it on. But, again, similar to Brian Balaga, when you get to a certain age, you can't just automatically say there's going to be a bounce back. Um Linebacker, I know, is not going to be very popular because we did that last year, but as you can see, it's a problem. Cornerback is a problem. So, you know, it's kind of best player available at this point. There's a lot of, there's not a lot of just top tier talent on this team anywhere. I mean, there's so much red and orange. It's just, it's kind of brutal. Um, I don't really want to go Micah Parsons, although that is just a fantastic pick based on value and the fact that we could use him but i just we got a guy and he's just got to step up that's all there is to it he's got to get better um gregory Rousseau is certainly the most intriguing again with hassan reddick leaving and, and and my biggest fear is we brought in jj we paid a ton of money the reason he wasn't able to do anything is because nobody was helping him last year and i know he's got chandler next to him and that's cool assuming he has a big bounce back year and all that but i don't know that that's enough and again, he was erased because he was double teamed so much. We have to bring pressure from other places other than just J.J. Or he's just going to be old, broke down, overused, and um, he's just not going to be effective. So I want to make sure that my investment makes the most sense. And I want to bring as much heat as I possibly can. And so we're going to make sure that we have some pass rush. We're going to draft Gregory Rousseau here. Um, and then for the Raiders, this is a fantastic spot as much as I've always hated taking a linebacker. And I'll be completely honest, I don't think they're going to. Um, this is basically what I, I guess this is a what would I do kind of a mock as opposed to a predictive kind of a mock because I just I just don't think so as I've said you got the top two free agent linebackers last year as a GM if you draft a linebacker in the first round you're basically saying hey guys I should be fired I suck at my job now maybe that's Gruden maybe Gruden's the one pulling the strings and so Mayock gets a pass I don't know I don't know exactly how that dynamic works I know a lot of people say Gruden is the guy in charge and Mayock is figurehead or something i don't know but um from the standpoint of where we need help and and just what an unbelievable value value micah parsons was a lock top 10 for this entire process we're now about to get him at 17 it pains me but i i do think it is the absolute best available option um then we get back to miami and Miami did get Penae Sewell, so we got that offensive line looking better. Everybody's upset because they wanted a wide receiver. And now, look, we do have Rashad Bateman still sitting here, which I think is fantastic. Um, linebacker is certainly a consideration. I know some Dolphins fans have yelled at me about that. Uh, who is it that you guys are all excited about? Let me look real quick. I don't know. He might not even be on the team anymore, but um, there's somebody here that you guys are like, are you stupid? We have so-and-so. Jer I think it's Jerome Baker. I mean... <laughs> What? What do you What do you want me to say here? Oh, you apparently don't know about Jerome Baker. Mm, all right. I mean, whatever, man. I, I just linebacker certainly is an option. Um, if we look at interior offensive line, do we need help there? Uh, yeah. Do we have some recent investments? Yes, we got Michael Dieter. Unfortunately, he was just 
putrid. Um, we got a fourth round pick in Solomon Kinley, kindly, whatever, putrid. So that stinks. Uh, Michael Dieter didn't play very much, so maybe he'll, but that, I mean, that doesn't make you great either. So I, we, we do need help there. Um, Mac Jones is certainly not a consideration. Christian Barmore would be exciting because we did just get one of my favorite guys in last year's draft, Raekwon Davis. I loved him and I was super excited to see he was having a great year, or especially that it, it kind of picked up as the year went on. But I don't think this is an area, as you can see, one of the few areas. We got a decent amount of, of green here. Um, and then obviously we got Christian Wilkins. So we, we've invested a lot in it already. So I don't want to go that route. Um, and then we've got, I think, what is going to excite a lot of people at wide receiver. And, and again, we got to get the guy some help. Um, we did get Lynn Bowden. Uh, you know, Jakeem Grant is an exciting player. I don't know that he's like the answer. Devontae Parker, I think, has been a decent wide receiver for a long time, but I think I'm just going to do... It, it does feel right. Um, we do need linebacker, but you can wait on it. We need guard, and both of those are better, and maybe that is the right pick, but, um, I mean, what's the point? We, we got to get the guy a real, true, dynamic weapon because Tua is the most important piece, so it's either Elijah Vera Tucker, sorry about that, or Rashad Bateman. And, and by the way, there's a club of Rashad Bateman people that think he is wide receiver one. Um, lock top 10, best guy in the draft. They love Rashad Bateman. So um, we're technically calling it a reach, but it's also, for some people, this is considered a steal. And this is the part in the draft. Every time Washington comes up, I just think, ah, darn it. Because I want to take Mac Jones, but you always trade up for quarterbacks when you get quarterbacks. Um I guess the issue is nobody wants to trade back. Everybody's taking picks, and they're all content, and they're, it's like, who's trading back? The Vikings could have, possibly, if they again, if you want more value, but I, I want Quiddy Pay. Um, we're not passing on Jalen Waddle. That was a fantastic value. Maybe we could have moved back a little bit. Um, but, I mean, you got the Bears, and you got Washington, maybe the Colts, and, you know, a couple other teams, the Steelers, possibly. A lot of different teams possibly thinking, hey, let's go up and get Mack. But it always just it always falls this way, and I always feel stupid because it's like you always have to trade up if you want a quarterback. But I mean, he's a he's a good value. Um, I'd like to have him. Uh, he generally falls, it seems like, to the Bears, but I don't really exactly know why. I mean, I, I again, we could go the Lions route and say, listen, just be terrible, and um, we're good. Or the hero, the superhero, as you can see, one of the highest graded quarterbacks in, in football last year. He's a freak. We'll just roll with this guy and everything will be fine. Um, I don't think that's the thought process, but, I, you know, I, I mean, it just, it's just it's an obvious choice for me. Again, unless you're saying he's not good enough, I just don't like him. But again, I'm using this board and this board says he is worth it and he is that good. So I'm going to stick with that. If you don't like him, throw it in the comments. Let me know whatever it is, what it is. But that's what I'm doing. Um, as far as the Chicago Bears, the offensive line is becoming a very serious problem. We just lost our right tackle. Um, it was bad before we lost our right tackle, and we just lost another one. These are technically reaches, but considering how bad things are, getting a guy like Jalen Mayfield to, to fill that right tackle spot or Sam Cosme to come in and be the left tackle, possibly Elijah Vera Tucker because we need help on the interior. There's a lot of options here. I mean, and, and if things weren't as dire in other places, like wide receiver, although we, we did tag um, our, our wide receiver, Allen Robinson, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to stick around because Allen essentially has said, I don't care, I'm not playing here. So I think that's going to get ugly. I don't, I don't even think they should have done that unless they're going to try to tag and trade him, um, which which would kind of make sense. I just think you're making things worse, man. You got guys leaving, basically saying, I'm, I'm, I, that, that place is terrible and I don't want to be here anymore. And when you get to that level, which is why your GM and head coach should have been fired, and I don't even think Bears fans necessarily agree with that, you want to be able to fire these guys, come in with a fresh slate, and win over the team. And instead, they keep those guys, the team is not happy, and then you tag a guy that the whole team is saying, pay him, pay him, pay him, pay him, and they're like, no, we're not going to pay him, and we're not going to let him leave either. It's like, you guys are shooting yourself in the foot, man. It's just, it's not a good thing. Um, but let's just let's just look at it here. If we look for Chicago... Just so you can see what I'm looking at. And I think, again, Bobby Massey, good football player. He's gone. Charles Leno, is he still around? I don't remember what the situation is with Charles Leno. I'm just going to straight up Google it. Uh, it says he's a tackle for the Bears, so whatever. Um, let me look here because there was something with him, Charles Leno. I don't remember exactly what it was. 
uh, 30 years old in the final year of his contract. That's a problem. On top of that, again, the interior is not great. We do. I mean, we don't even have a right tackle. It just feels like we have to do it. You know what I mean? I'd like to get you maybe a wide receiver like Kadarius Tony, but again, you you tag the guy, so I guess we're just going to roll with it. Um, quarterback is not an option anymore. We could go Cosme here. Let me just look real quick and see if he has any experience at right tackle because I think that's – and, again, he he's a right tackle that's probably going to switch to left tackle, so maybe we go Samuel Cosme and um, – you make him play right tackle, and then next year you slide him over to left tackle, and he's your starting left tackle. But I'm just kind of curious. He does. He did. So in 2018, he played. So I think that's going to be our pick. We're going to play him at right tackle because he has experience at right tackle. He played fairly well, right? Um, and then next year, depending on what happens with Charles Leno, maybe we'll switch him back. So Samuel Cosme is going to be our pick here. Again, maybe not the greatest value in the world, but considering the positional importance and how bad we need him and all that stuff, that's what we're doing. We could have traded back. Um, that would be a, a prime opportunity to do that. But again, I just, he's the right guy. He's the guy we want, and I'm not going to risk losing him. Um, especially when you got a team like the Colts sitting here who do need a tackle. Uh, they, um, unless I'm getting him confused with somebody else, they lost, you know, I, I, that is right. They lost their left tackle, probably their wide receiver and quarterback. We satisfied half of those things. And so we still need a tackle. I know that that's, it's a left tackle, so Tevin Jenkins kind of comes into consideration. But um, let me just switch over a couple things really quickly. So I've had some time to think about this one. Um, it's tough. I'm, I'm torn for the Colts because I would really like a tackle. Um, if we look at Jalen Mayfield, he's exclusive. I shouldn't say entirely exclusively. It's not that he can't play left tackle, but he's mostly outside of like 40 snaps played right tackle. But that's kind of similar to Tevin Jenkins. Um, if you look at Tevin here primarily a right tackle 2000 snaps there 148 at right guard 490 at left tackle um i think we could trust him to come in and play left tackle he had a great 2020 season the other consideration which is primarily what people have the colts doing is taking edge um the third option so we, we could go tevin jenkins we could look here we got an edge or we could trade Here's the thing. If we trade back, we're basically trading and expecting to take a tackle because if you look, we got an edge-needy team, an edge-needy team, and we were kind of going down. And plus, the team that's trading up probably wants an edge rusher. So we're going to be losing this little edge rusher alley here. Um, I mean, it's possible somebody's coming up for JOK or Elijah Vera Tucker, but I'm thinking probably not. I don't know if you want to trade up or possibly Christian Barmore. Um, but it, 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 so it's I could take the edge rusher. Or I could trade back, get some additional compensation and a tackle. And I kind of like that thinking. Um, because, again, I think a lot of edge rushers are going to go here, which means a tackle should fall to us. It's going to be unfortunate. I mean, I know I'm in control and I can make that happen, but I'm not going to just force things to happen. But I kind of like that. It, it helps me make my own decision, depending on how far back we want to go. Um, but, again, we've got a couple different tackle options. Um, even Alex Leatherwood is a consideration, I would say. And then for Edge, we've got Ojolari, we got Phillips, we got Owe, we got Asai. So we, we've got so many options. I don't think we lose everybody. So I'm going to consider that. And one team that I thought would make sense to trade up uh, to get one of the better edge rushers in the class is the Cleveland Browns looking to get somebody across from Miles Garrett, get some additional help there. Um, so if we swap this over, this is going to cost, I figured, if we gave a late third and then the Colts gave back a fifth there you go so we would be our fifth round pick would turn into a third round pick essentially is what that would be um in order for us to move back and I think I would be okay with that it's not a ton of compensation but we have the possibility that an edge rusher still falls to us and there's some tackles on the board and it just it just helps kind of narrow down our options for us because I like a lot of these options and I don't know. I think we can get more value and still get somebody that we really want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the Cleveland Browns are going to pull the trigger on Aziz Ojolari to put across from Miles Garrett. Then we got the Tennessee Titans. Again, very similar situation where Tennessee really just needs some help up front. Um, I don't know that Christian Barmore is, is a somebody that we could strike from consideration. But um, I think the edge is going to be the most important thing. This is our one guy up front that's kind of a monster we can put anybody in here, or we can go here. Um, the best guy available is Christian Barmore. Um, but
but I think, you know, it's harder to find a really dominant edge rusher. I think we possibly could find another defensive lineman later to add to that. So I'm going to go with Jalen Phillips and draft him right here. And then again, the Jets are in a similar situation where I think a edge rusher would be nice, but we're kind of thinning out a little bit. Um, so now we got to look over at the Jets and see what the the J J J J J J looking for J, and then we'll come over here. Yeah, I could pause it. I don't feel like it. We're just doing it live. Um, so this is kind of the first thing. Where where are we absolutely desperate? And as you can see, this is this is rough, right? I mean, I know you guys love C J Mosley and that's cool, but this is this is painful. Um, if we look here, it's just you know. Just from a, we don't have human beings to stand their standpoint, it's rough. Um, guys that even played Harvey Lange, I'm sorry, I, I know football is, is my thing, but I've never heard his name in my life. I don't know who that is. Did he make a tackle? I, I guess I don't watch a lot of Jets games, so I don't know. But, I mean, jeez, that's brutal. And, and again, look at the value of JOK here. It's a strong consideration. We've got interior offensive line. I mean, clearly not completely out of line. Um, you know, Greg is getting a little bit older. He's kind of mediocre. Uh, we've got Alex Lewis is a 2016 guy. Everybody loves Fant, and I have no idea why. Uh, people are super excited about him. The guy's not great at much of anything, but you guys love him. I know he's not an interior guy, but I'm just, just kind of talking out loud. It's not my favorite thing, so I think I'm just going to avoid it. It's certainly a consideration. Um, and then we look at the defensive line, and you can see this is basically our biggest strength. So I don't think I want to go there. So I think it, it kind of speaks for itself. I don't know how popular of a pick it is. You could also look at Najee Harris. I actually think that's a very, very strong consideration. Um, Frank Gore, obviously, I mean, he's getting up there. Uh, LaMichael Pirine, no. You got some guys with limited sample sizes that have done some stuff, but this is not a long-term answer. We don't really have a long-term. I'm, I'm kind of leaning kind of heavily in this direction, actually, um, especially when you take into account we just got Zach Wilson. We got we to gotta get some help. Um, wide receiver also. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm talking to myself about a linebacker here because I think the most important thing should be taking care of Zach Wilson. So offensive line would be a consideration. Offensive tackle, I think, could be a consideration. But I'm just going to I'm, I'm gonna take the low-hanging fruit here and get – I'm going to go Najee Harris. I'm going Najee Harris. And I think that's probably somewhat ill-advised when you have bigger things to worry about. But, um, you know, you, you start forcing teams to respect the run, it's going to open things up for our quarterback. we still got to find some more weapons for him, but um, that's going to be the thought process. And I think even going forward – Trying to build up the offensive line is going to be important. And, and free agency is going to change a lot of stuff. We may go out and get a running back. We may go out and get a wide receiver. We may go out and stack up some offensive line. I'm sure they're going to do something in those areas. But right now we need all of it. So I'm just going to go Najee Harris, and we'll just kind of play it by ear from there. Pittsburgh Steelers, I mean, man, the offensive line is just becoming a very serious problem, which is becoming a theme for a lot of these teams. Um, if we just look at the lineup here, uh, Villanueva, I don't think is going to be around for very much longer. He's a, a good football player, but we're kind of coming to the end of the line, which is kind of a, a common theme. He's actually a free agent. Actually, you know what? I don't think he's coming back. I think that's the, we don't know, but I think the consensus is he's not coming back. So we don't have Villanueva. And look at this. I mean, the green generally, not always, but generally means they were practice squad guys that got re-signed. So we've got a bunch of practice squad guys here. Um, so according to this, we don't have a tackle, a guard, a center, um, a right tackle. We've got David DeCastro. I mean, it's just, this is, this is beyond, beyond brutal. Um, and so if we come over here and look again, Jalen Mayfield is mostly a right tackle. We could possibly call him a, uh, a left tackle. And so again, this is where the Colts are kind of hurting themselves. Um, cause I think Tevin Jenkins is probably our best option. I know running back, you guys wanted Najee Harris, but I think we're, we're so dire along the offensive line that it's it's becoming silly to start looking at running backs right here. Um, I think I think Tevin Jenkins is probably going to be the right answer. I mean, we, we, we could say Jalen because he's higher on the board and we don't really care about left and right all that much, but the difference is not that that massive. And when you got a guy that can play left and right seemingly, 
I think that makes more sense for a team that needs left and right and center and, and everything in between, literally. Um, so we're going to go Tevin Jenkins here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now we've got the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we have a similar thought process. Trevor Lawrence was just drafted, and we need to do everything in our power to make sure that this man is is great. So I'm only considering offense here. Not that they don't need more stuff, but that's literally the only thing I care about right now. Um, and again, free agency is going to change a lot of this. But as you can see, the tackles are a problem. The wide receivers, I, I like Chark and Chenault, but as I've been saying, we've got a couple decent number twos. We need a real legit number one. Um, I think we've got a pretty solid running back. I know there's still some questions because it's like, is this guy for real? But it's not going to be my top priority tight end. Uh, there aren't really any available, but I'm kind of just looking at a tackle or a wide receiver is kind of where I'm sitting. And I really think, I really think a guy like Kadarius Tony is going to make the most sense. Although the thing that freaks me out about Kadarius Tony is he fits the mold of everybody else. He's just like everybody else. I mean, he's kind of a run after the catch kind of guy. I mean, he's got good hands. You throw it to him and he gets a bunch of yards after the fact. I mean, that's, that's DJ Chark and LaVisca Chenault, especially Chenault. Um, so it would be nice to get sort of a compliment, and that's where somebody like Rondale Moore comes in. You talk about Rondale Moore. I've never actually clicked on this. They added this as a new thing. Um, that's not really going to work for me. Let's come over here and just do this. Rondale Moore kind of fits the dynamic of being a different kind of wide receiver. 5'9", 180. Not that I want small. Nobody wants small. It's not something that you want. But um, if you look at this, for example, um, I guess he's, he's not even... Was he, he's not a slot guy, is he? Like, exclusively a slot guy? How, what is his percentage here in the slot? Oof, it is it is really high in the slot. I don't know. Maybe that's not what we want. I don't want... Because, again, we want him to be a number... He has to line up on the outside by his lonesome. Terrace Marshall... I, I, everyone's going to say, just take Kadarius. It makes more sense. Let me just look real quick. Because I want him to be on the outside, and he needs to be able to get the deep balls going. And I know Terrace Marshall is actually quite good at that. Um, he's somebody that doesn't get talked about very much, but I'm intrigued by some of the stuff that I see in terms of, it says passing, stupid, learn to read. Um, look at this, 99.6 is solid. I mean, I know you're always going to get higher grades when you're deeper because we're talking about more impressive type stuff. But I believe Terrace Marshall is one of the few that has a 99.9. 9. Seven of nine, 266 yards, four touchdowns. I wish I had, I wish we had a combine that I could rely on. I know there's pro day stuff, but that would really help. I, I guess I'm going to take Kadarius, and I'm going to I'm going to trust that he's not just another um, get the ball in his hands and yards after the catch guy. He's going to line up. He's going to go up against number one corners, and it is what it is. Um, it really makes me nervous that that's not what it is. Um, I'd like more of a like an Amon Ra or an Elijah Moore or a Terrace Marshall type. I don't know. We'll go Kadarius Tony. It, it just it doesn't it doesn't feel like a fit thing. But if, if he can just be a number one, I don't care exactly what style he is. But I'm just it, it's a concern for me. Uh, now the Colts are back on the clock, and again we're looking at edge and tackle. We got Jason Oway here, who's a physical freak. He just ran some stupid forty time that's just out of this world. And we've got Alex Leatherwood again. I don't really care for Jalen Mayfield, so that's kind of the consideration that I have. Let's take a look at Alex Leatherwood really quick, and then we'll look at Jason Oway, and we'll make our decision off of that. Um, I think maybe Barmore could possibly be a consideration if we're just looking to get some pressure in general. Um, so as you can see, and I want to go to allowed pressure here so we can get the statistics as well. Three sacks allowed. Uh, it sounds low, but that's not the greatest in the world. The grades are decent. And then the snap counts, obviously, he's primarily a left tackle, which is what we're looking for. So that does make a good amount of sense. We'll take a look really quickly at Jason Owe. Just see if this really kind of jumps out at us, because it is obviously both of these are incredibly important. Um, as you can see, the grades are fantastic. His run defensibility for a guy that's 252 is really impressive, although... It kind of came out of nowhere, and it's a small sample size, so it could be kind of a fluke. But again, that's a lot of consistency right there. He just dominated everybody. And these are big schools. I mean, Ohio State wasn't great. Um, but, I mean, these are not small school places where you would just kind of tear it up. Um, the biggest concern, though, is his pass rush. The grade is fine, but it's based on one game. And again, small sample size. And then look at this. 
this is, you know, yeah, he had 20 pressures and that's cool, but take away the 10, I think he's sub 10%. I, I, I think I'm going to go Alex Leatherwood. Um, I think this is a little bit too high risk of a, of a thing, and we just really have to have a left tackle. So we're going to go Alex Leatherwood here. Again, you can say that we messed up because we had Tevin Jenkins and we missed him, or we could have gotten one of these better edge rushers. I'm going to take the talent, and I think Alex Leatherwood is a legit starter. I just do. Um, now we got to the – we've got our, our uh, Baltimore Ravens guy here. Uh, edge rusher, again, important. Uh, Christian Barmore is still sitting there. I don't really want Elijah Vera Tucker. Uh, we've got a great – I'm having a hard time. The the mental faculties are, are waning, and I can tell because I'm having a hard time clicking and talking at the same time. But you can see just a lot of green, man. I mean, there's not a lot of elite players, but, I mean, just good guys. The question is who's still going to be around, and I think that's the biggest consideration when you're talking about the – Baltimore Ravens and edge rusher it's not that we last year had bad football players it's that this year we don't have a lot of guys Yannick Ngakwe, Tyus Bowser, Matt Judon, Pernell McPhee again I don't know exactly who's staying and who's going I think Yannick's already gone gone um, but we need some guys and and again you look at the ages 29, uh, 33 Yannick I think is gone but you know 26 and 20. so it's just we just need somebody and I think Jason Owe could fit the mold of, of a Baltimore Ravens 3-4 outside linebacker type. You know, Granted, they do have sort of the bigger guys, um, but, but a, a, a stand-up outside linebacker like that could, could work out. Um, it's not a team where you have to have like the 260, 270-pound you know, massive guy. Uh, linebacker, I mean, Patrick Queen, literally one of the worst linebackers in football, but do we want to waste another pick on another? I, I don't. I just don't. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Hope, sorry if you didn't realize that it was that bad, but it is that bad. But I'm still not going to go that route. Um, as far as offensive line, interior offensive line is not, I, I guess I shouldn't remove that from consideration, especially with uh, Brown now saying he wants out. He wants to be a left tackle, and I guess Baltimore's like, no, we got a guy. We're not going to make you a left tackle. We want you as a right tackle. Such a weird situation. Um, I mean, wide receiver's cool, and I'd like to get you some help there, but we can get that later. I'm not going to reach for a wide receiver when we have other needs. I just think, man, there's so much, like, there's just so much talent just sitting here that's getting wasted, and, and we could we could be in trade territory. Right, because I mean Jeremiah Wosu Koromoa is not going to make it. We know he's not going to make it past the Packers. I don't know if the Saints are planning on taking him. They might. Um, man, I mean that, that. As a Packers fan, I can tell you I love this because these two guys are are as good as gone. And if if unless they go one two, but but we got Barmore. Oh my gosh, Packers. Are, this is great. Um, anyways, I'm just thinking out loud here. So we could do a trade. I don't want to go back too incredibly far if we did and we're only doing a first round although i messed this up and i did seven rows so we could actually see how how that plays out if we wanted to we could go back into the second round and i'll just let it run out um and the only reason i'm even considering that again is because it's kind of a reach here but it's not that much of a reach. I'm, I'm overthinking it we're gonna take jason away here um because I don't want to do stupid stuff and miss out. And I, I always miss it. Even when I'm in control, I still take guys away from myself and, and then feel stupid about it. All right, Saints. And this one's really tough because it's like everything just feels fake. You know, it's like you look at this and it's like, oh, man, we got this great team. What can we do to add on to it? But it's like, yeah, but this guy's going to leave and then we're going to be terrible. Like we have to do something massive. Sanders is out the door. A quarterback like 99% is gone. Maybe it's going to be some shock the world thing where he's like, ah, trick jam coming back. Um, as you can see, corner is not great. I mean, Marshawn, I hate to not call him great, but I don't know what the deal is with this guy. He's getting worse every year. I mean, he was a stud in college. He was a lock in a, in a stacked cornerback class. Um, panic check to make sure I'm recording. <laughs> I hate that feeling. Um, he, he, he came out on top and it's just, I don't know what's going on with the guy. Um, you got Chauncey Gardner Johnson who, you know, took a step back for some unknown reason. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with the DB. Did you get a new coach that needs to be fired or what's going on? Um, but it isn't great. Cornerback is certainly a consideration. If we look at that, we're getting into much better territory. Again, this is a massive reach based on uh, where we're at. So 
I don't know if I'm going to stick to the board. I can't really do that. If we're looking at interior offensive line, we just drafted Cesar Ruiz. So I guess we'll pull the whole, we'll give it time thing. Andres Pete is really bad. So certainly a consideration. I just, I just, I, again, I hate, it's like, we need to do something massive. It's like, how about a guard? <laughs> but, but what are we going to do? How do you, how do you fix our quarterback is leaving? I can't do anything about that. Um, Christian Barmore. I mean, some of these guys have fallen so far. I don't want to just keep skipping them just because. I mean, their talent is so crazy right now. Uh, as far as linebacker, I mean, we've got Demario Davis, but he's 32 years old. I mean, that's definitely, I think, a consideration right now. Quan Alexander, I think, is gone. I think I might go that route. One of these two needs to go. Um, and if we're going to get a quarterback, we want to protect him, but we don't have... I, I just, I'm going to go JOK. I'm just going to stick with the defense. I, I, it's just it's just a coin flip. I don't know. He's at the top on the board, so that's what we're doing. Now for the Packers, um, Christian Barmore, I think, I think is the right answer. I know Elijah Vera Tucker makes a ton of sense because we need more offensive linemen, but the, the biggest thing is the Packers have guys along that defensive line, and they didn't get production out of it. Zadarius Smith, similar to J.J. Watt, was, the I believe, the second most double-teamed player in the NFL, and that's unacceptable. And it was largely because guys like Kenny Clark and Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith did not really step up. Um, and that's pretty disappointing. Um, and so I feel like you put Barmore in there, and hopefully you get a little bit more. We just restructured Preston, so he's it's all incentive-based. He Basically, they just took all his money away and said, if you want to earn it back, you got to earn it back, and that's it. Otherwise, we're just going to cut you, and you're going to lose all your money. Um and he's not going to make a bunch as a as a free agent if they cut him. So so this is an opportunity for him to get a baseline eight million dollars and earn back that money by being a stud. Uh, Kenny, I don't know what the deal is with him. I'm hoping that it was just our defensive coordinator was not putting him in in great situations, and our new one will do better. But um, you get Barmore in there, and ideally we've got Barmore, we've got Kenny Clark, we've got Rashawn Gary, who's continuing to grow very slowly, but he is growing and getting better. And then you got Zadarius, and and you cannot just double Zadarius all day. That's kind of the thought process. Um, again, Elijah Vera Tucker does make sense, but we can get guards later. Zayvon Collins, possibly. I know a lot of Packer fans like it, but we could do that later. Jalen Mayfield, a strong consideration, but I just I'm just going Barmore. I just think that that's a fantastic fit for the Packers, and it's it's again similar to what I said of the Vikings. It's sort of that oh no kind of a thing because Zadarius is already kind of an oh no guy, and Rashawn has shown flashes of being a no-no guy. And Kenny has been, again, we need more consistency out of him, but you add Barmore to it. And then again, you've got the DBs, which cornerback is another consideration. But again, they're so far away. But, you know, you got Jair, you got the safety group. It's just, it's, it's, again, the talent is there for the Packers. It's just the production is not. Uh, Buffalo Bills now, uh, again, I know Edge is another big, strong consideration. We're kind of whittling that down. We got a sigh that's sitting there. If we come over and look at the Buffalo Bills and what they've got going on, um, we do have Zayvon Collins would be a strong consideration just based on, I mean, yikes. Uh, Milano, I think, just got paid a bunch more. And, and anytime I talk bad about Milano, everybody freaks out because, no, he's really good. I'll leave that up to you. I don't know, man. I mean, he got paid cool. Um, defensive line, I, I think Barmore would have been fantastic. Uh, Ed Oliver. I mean, that was just, it was just a bad pick. And was, I don't know what else to say about it, as was Edmonds. Um, no, I was going to say something mean, but I'll leave it alone. Uh, you got a good team, that's that's for sure. Uh, interior, uh, Elijah Vera Tucker, I think, is, is would be fantastic, especially when you consider Josh Allen. And I, I understand saying, look, we have we have other needs, we have bigger needs, we have all that stuff. But, I mean, listen, this team right now is, is Josh Allen. And I really think... I mean, Josh Allen and Diggs is just, it's its what makes this go. And I want to get the defense back up and running. And I really do. And we can reach out an edge rusher, and that's fine. Um, I don't want to go corner. I think we've got some safeties creeping up here, which I'm not super interested in. But if we're going to simply look at this as this is our bread and butter, this is the guy that's not only going to help us, he, we're going to win a Super Bowl with this guy. But hopefully f we're going to have a winning tradition here for a very long time. It's all about protecting him. It really is. And we can do that here. We could also do that right here um, by getting a real stud running back. I know you guys have Zach Moss, who you're excited about, so we probably won't do that. But it is a consideration. You just get this freak of a running back, and then it's like, what do you do to stop it? I don't really know. I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, but I just think Elijah Vera Tucker is going to make the most sense. Um, 
if we look at again our interior guys we don't have a lot of guys that we've gotten early cody ford was a second round pick but i mean yikes i mean what do you want me? i just like oh we don't need a guard we got cody ford like <laughs> okay i guess um other recent i mean ike botger was a uh, undrafted free agent in 2018 we just we're not investing in it early at all uh we've got an old brian winters who's not good at football so it's just it's just it is what it is and it's also going to help our running back zach moss who we like and we think he's talented and we want him to be better so boom elijah vera tucker i think it makes perfect sense again i know we want edge really badly and all that stuff um but again i i just I, I, our quarterback is the most important thing and we we have to make that continue to work and we got to protect him and i don't want him getting hurt and banged up and that's going to make this thing unravel entirely so we'll, we'll work on the defense we'll get there we'll continue to build it but um Elijah Vera Tucker is the pick. And it's an, a stupid value. A stupid value. At 30, Elijah Vera Tucker, stupid. Um, this has become kind of a no-brainer just as I'm looking at the board. You can probably see it as well. Um, I've been picking offensive line for the Chiefs for a long time because we need a lot of help on the interior, and both of our tackles are getting up in age. They're expensive, and they're in the final years of their contract, and the Chiefs cut both of them. Our entire offensive line is in disarray. It's a disaster. It's horrific. I don't know why they did it. It's just, it's baffling. to Well, they needed money. They just freed up like $50 billion by restructuring your, their quarterback, which I think is, in my head, I'm picturing it like, we got to do something dire. I don't know what to do. Let's cut our tackles. And then Pat's like, what are you guys doing? You're like, well, we need money. He's like, well, you can restructure me, right? And they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, just, that's just in my head. You didn't have to cut both, but Jalen Mayfield is just kind of an obvious pick here. He's the second best available player critical position critical need there's not a whole lot i can say about it um then we get to our tampa bay buccaneers don't think i want to go zavin although the age of you know we're, we're not going that route um let me just pull it up because i, I kind of have an idea what i want to do but i just want to look at it really quickly we'll just go position by position again i'm going to rule out linebacker let's look at safety just based on this and i want to pull this up as well uh, what team are we talking about? T, not tab, TB. There we go. Bidding in my ears. Show you a thing or two about a thing or two. So we got Winfield for sure. Whitehead is, uh, I mean, he's pretty young, so he doesn't have to go anywhere. We are getting thin. It's an option, I guess. Uh, the one thing that's kind of standing out to me, though, um, although we do have Ronald Jones, and he's a very good running back, Leonard Fournette, I believe, is probably going. LaShawn is going. A lot of guys are leaving. <sighs> I'm considering Travis Etienne. Um, I probably shouldn't, though, because I think Buccaneers fans are going to freak out because Ronald Jones, he is a good running back. So I probably just won't do that. Wide receiver is a consideration. We did um, tag Chris Godwin with the expectation that we're going to be giving him in a, a long-term contract, which should free up a little bit of money for us once we get that all figured out. Um, but that may never happen, just to be completely clear. But either way, we got Godwin. We have Evans. We don't have to go that route. Um, Gronk is probably gone, but we still have Brait, so we don't have to go that route as far as tight end. Um, offensive line, though, is a pretty strong consideration. Josh Wells, A.Q. Shipley, you can see these guys are getting are probably leaving, and we have no depth. Uh, Ryan Jensen is a 30-year-old guy in the final year of his contract. Alex Kappa, and as far as talent is concerned, I don't think we have, again, not the greatest in the world. Uh, Donovan Smith is probably sticking around. I, I, this is another guy where I, I thought he left, but I think I was thinking of somebody else. Maybe it was the 49ers guy. I don't know. But it, 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 it's similar to the Chiefs where I'm like, we should probably do something about this, and then everyone gets mad, and then things fall apart, and then they stop yelling at me about it. Um, the most popular pick range is right here though the defensive line um biggest issue i have you don't see a whole lot i mean if we just look at defensive tackles in particular the value is horrible um if we look at edge it's not as bad but we're talking about possibly getting some kind of a long-term extension with shaquille barrett uh jason pierre paul still has another year on his contract we could add to that and have barrett and paul and paul's successor about the best i can come up with right now again i don't want to go defensive line i mean a trade back would make a lot of sense but if we trade back then chiefs fans don't get a pick or excuse me bucks fans don't get a pick um unless i continue to run it out which i could i could auto pick some of these i could auto pick 
until we get back to the Buccaneers and see what's available. Do we do that? I don't. I just. I don't know what to do here. Um, I don't want Zavin. I don't want a safety. I don't want a running back. I don't think I want a wide receiver. Wyatt Davis. Wyatt Davis could make sense. It's just I just think people are going to be mad because they're like, I don't want a stupid guard. Yeah. Otherwise, we're looking at a sigh. But again, we have guys. Sorry for hitting that. It's just not a good spot to be in, I don't think. I don't want to be here. Gregory Newsom, if we want to go corner, I think is a consideration. I think these guys are relatively young. 23 for Sean Murphy Bunting. Carlton Davis is only 24. They're not good. I mean, they're not great. I shouldn't say they're not good. Again, I'm going to make everybody mad saying that stuff. But we could certainly do better. But again, it's another reach. I just, I, I feel like Wyatt Davis is the best. We have to trade back. I don't want any of this. We got to move back a little bit. And then I'll, what I'll do is, I think you got to hit auto draft first. Then we got to do the trade. And then it'll auto draft. Yeah, see, but I don't want to miss it. Who wants to come up? Who needs a linebacker? Let's just not even try to overthink this does anybody need a linebacker real bad anybody nobody needs a linebacker nobody cares about a linebacker according to this anyways yikes <sighs> safety anybody need a safety this video is i let me pause it because this is getting stupid all right so here's what i'm gonna do we're gonna do the eagles not because i think the eagles really need anything but just because they have a bunch of picks and i just wanted to find a team that's not going to be hurt too much it's only going to cost them a fifth and a sixth. And because it's an auto pick, I don't have to choose who they're picking. They can pick whoever the computer thinks they want to pick. Um, I just got to pause it and turn off auto pick before it's... <laughs> I'm probably going to ruin this whole video right here because I don't know if I can even turn that off. Uh, but let's do it. And then stop. Oh. See, I can't turn it off. Hmm. All right. Well, that sucks. <laughs> But we got we, we, a little bonus stuff here, all right? Um, so they went with Zayvon Collins. Uh, you got Trayvon Morig to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jets went and got Travis Etienne, which is cool because, no, it's not. You Told you I was going to ruin this video. That's all right. You got a heck of a duo <laughs> running back. And then Rondale Moore to the Falcons. And then I don't think I can even... Uh, no, there you go. So we got Joseph Asai. So there you go, Buccaneers fans. I let the computer do what I should have done a long time ago. But we still got our guy. We got Joseph Asai. Um, and again, we got some additional... So, so forget forget all this nonsense. Um, that 100%. I mean, Wyatt Davis would have been a consideration. But we're in a better area. And we do need somebody to take over for Jason Pierre-Paul when that happens. We also need some more depth of the position. So, I mean, that's the biggest reason we wanted to trade back um, because we could have taken Wyatt Davis where we were. We just want to get some better value. And if it looks, and if, if somebody took Joseph aside, then we go Wyatt Davis. But... <laughs> Hi there. I guess that's how we're going to end it, man. That's just, that's, uh, that's life when you're trying to be a YouTuber and you got a uh, wife and a job and four kids, so... <laughs> it just is what it is, but I'm 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 happy with the pick and it is what it is. But let's just do a quick one-time recap here. We'll just I'm not even going to talk about it, but just so you can see what all happened here, this is what we ended up with. We had just a couple trades, nothing too crazy. Um, most of these are are basically auto picks, um, but there are some strong considerations and and some sometimes it's like I just don't want to be here. I and, and again you can look at Tampa Bay and say this is. Um, you could easily take so-and-so, and it's a great value, Joseph Asai, whatever. But I'm, I'm trying to stick to the board. So um, based on the board, it would not have been a good pick. And I'm much happier trading back and getting, even though I didn't technically make the pick, trading back and getting this. So anyways, uh, that's it. Again, let me know about the format. If you're like, listen, this is stupid. I would rather you go back to the old way. I'm not going to watch this garbage. Uh, that's fine. I kind of I kind of like it because it gives me the opportunity to show you the process and also, also show you some stuff that uh, you're going to have to pay a lot of money for if you if you want to see it. Um, and again, it kind of gets me off the hook because I always talk about, well, on my board, it didn't look this way. And based on PFF and all this stuff, and it's like, if I can show you, I feel like it, it makes it a little bit better. Uh, but maybe you don't care anyways. Um, but it, it gives me a little bit more peace of mind. But with that, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope that you will subscribe to this channel. Hit the little bell notification, like all that good stuff 
Um, and I will catch you next time.